Hello and welcome everyone to Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. This is episode 97. Hello, Craig. How are you? Hello, Reza. I'm fine, thank you. It's a lovely day, isn't it? It's a beautiful day. If you're a new listener to this award-winning podcast, you're very welcome. Craig and I have over 40 years of teaching experience between us, and we're here to help you improve your English and take it to the next level. Craig, I think you'd like to mention something important about donating money via the Patreon scheme. Is that right? I would, but before I do that, just to let the listeners know, today we'll be talking about veterinary vocabulary. Vocabulary connected to animals and expressions with pets, mascotas. Before that, however, we'd just like to say thank you to our wonderful Patreons, who are Juan Leiva Galera, Daniel Contreras Aladro, Lara Alem, Armando Aguedelo, Sara Jarabo, Manuel Tarazoma, and my good friend Cory Finneran from the baseball podcast Ivy Envy. Thank you very much for being patrons of, or is it patrons or patrons? Patrons, <laughs> I suppose, being patrons of Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. And we are asking for more patrons so that we can give you show notes that uh, are complete transcriptions of everything we say. So to do this, we need about $100 a month. And we're asking for just $1, $1 or $2 per month, the price of a cup of coffee, so that we can continue to give you great content and also the transcriptions with every show we produce. To do this, go to <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> So to do this, to become a Patreon of our show, go to patreon.com, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Inglés podcast. And thank you very much. Okay, Craig, moving on to some feedback we got from Eva Garcia Romo. I think it was an email she sent, was it? Yes, we got this email from Eva, who I think lives fairly close to us here on the Costa on the Costa Blanca, somewhere on towards Alicante, and she uses the courses with her students on mansioningles.com, our free courses. But she's started uh, teaching an intensive course for workers in a veterinary clinic. And her clients there are, the clients of the clinic are mainly English. So the person who runs the clinic and the people who work in the clinic need English to speak to the clients. So in her email, she says, I was wondering if you have some specific course for this purpose. And unfortunately, Eva, we don't. But we thought to do a podcast about veterinary words and expressions and also words and idioms and expressions connected to animals and pets. Yes, Eva, I appreciate what a growing important area this is. In fact, about five or six years ago, I was asked to do a translation for an animal charity, Galgos 112, my good friends who look after the greyhounds, because so many of their uh, clients uh, were English speakers in Spain, who were adopting greyhounds, that they asked me to translate from Spanish into English the manual that they're given when adopting a greyhound. There's such uh, a high percentage of English-speaking people who are adopting animals in Spain, so I appreciate that it's, a, it's an ever-expanding area. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get down to business. However, in this episode, we're not going to concentrate on very medical terms and um, medical expressions. So if you're looking for a comprehensive list of veterinary terms, if you go to petmd.com, that's www.petmd.com slash 
veterinary terms, you'll find a very large A to Z alphabetical list of medical and veterinary terms. So we're just going to speak about general words and expressions in this episode. And you can find that link in the show notes to this episode at inglespodcast.com slash 97. Okay, so let's get down to business. Let's look at some useful words and expressions to do with animals. Craig, what about baby animals? Yeah, let's start talking about baby animals because everybody knows the word like words like dog, cat, cow, etc. But what about babies of those animals? What do you call a baby dog? A puppy. What about a baby cat? A pussy. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Edit that out, Craig. Again. <laughs> What about a baby cat? A baby cat is a kitten. Okay. Craig, have you ever had kittens? Um, well, the expression to have kittens means to be very uh, nervous or afraid, doesn't it? Or shocked or surprised, yeah. She had kittens. She was very uh, very nervous or very, very afraid of something. What's a baby horse? Baby horse is a foal, F-O-A-L. The vowel pronunciation is O. Foal. A calf is a baby. What's the adult called? Well, you could have a um, a grown up calf uh, as a cow, c o c o w, baka. But it could also be a whale, ballena. So w h a l e, whale. A baby whale is a calf, and a baby cow is a calf. What about a baby sheep? A lamb. L-A-M-B. Okay, so a lamb is a baby sheep and a baby pig is a piglet. Spelling? P-I-G-L-E-T. Piglet. And what about a baby bear? That's a cub. C-U-B. Be careful of the pronunciation of bear because a few of my students say beer, which of course is cerveza. <laughs> so bear, the animal is air, like hair, Stare, there, the same sound, bear. And beer is the same as ear or hear. So just remember you hear with your ear when you're drinking a beer. Are there any other animals which have baby cubs? Um, lions, tigers, lions, all and of those. wolves, I think. Is it a wolf, cu- a wolf cub? Yep. So a cat has a kitten, but a lion? No, a lion has a cub even though they're all from the cat family. That's true. Can you complete this collocation, Craig? A flock of... A flock of sheep or a flock of birds, perhaps? So, so what f- What does flock mean? Flock is the group name mm-hmm. for um, the animals, the plural of the animals. When you collect animals together, when there's a collection of birds or a collection of sheep, it's called a flock, a flock of birds. What do you call a collection of cattle or elephants? A herd of cattle or elephants. Or how, would you, how would you explain cattle? Um, cattle is a word which means cows. A collection of cows is cattle. For example, uh, a farmer has cattle. That means he has cows. But cattle is uncountable. And when you have more than one or a big group of fish together... Well, a group name. You say more than one, but two? No, no, no. It has to be a big group. <laughs> a big group is a school of fish. Two fish is not a school. Two fish is two fish. <laughs> a school of fish is a lot of fish. A lot of fish. You can't have a school of fish in your house. It's not possible. So that's school, S-C-H-O-O-L. If you need to remember that, just imagine fish sitting in a classroom. And then you have a school of fish. Notice mm. that when Reza said two fish, he didn't say with a, a e s at the end. So usually fish is, the plural of fish is fish. A lot of fish. What do you call a collection of dogs or wolves? A pack. A pack of dogs or a pack of wolves. P-A-C-K. And remember, the plural of wolf, W-O-L-F, is wolves, W-O-L-V, 
E S. One wolf, two wolves. What do you call a collection of cats? I didn't know this, but it's a clutter of cats. So if there's a huge group of cats or many cats together, it's a clutter. C L U double T E R. Did you know that? No,、nope, I didn't know it until we looked it up. So not a common one, but because cat is a common animal, I thought we should include it. It's a clutter of cats, and of course, when people are in a big group together, we say a crowd of people. Another weird one which we discovered, which we didn't know before, was a parliament of owls. That's owl boo. Yeah, I included this because it made me laugh. Yeah, me too. Owls have a reputation of being wise, savvy, or very intelligent, clever animals. So the idea of them being together in a parliament, <laughs> like politicians, just made me chuckle. It made me laugh a little. So it's a parliament of owls. You can impress your friends with that group word. Okay, Craig. Shall we move on to some useful expressions for dog or cat owners who what, might be? What's a what's a good idea? An English speaking environment. What's a good idea? Let's do it.、Um, feed. F double e d. Pienso in Spanish. That's the noun. Qué piensas? Estoy pensando en feeding my cat. So if I had a cat, I would feed it. So feed is a verb to feed the animal or to feed. Somebody to give them food, but as a noun, it's also the food you give them. So pienso,、uh, feed. So what would you call pienso de perro? Dog food, or dog feed, or dog feed. But probably dog food would would be more common. Chicken feed. Ah, okay.、Mm-hmm. Chicken feed is a is a common collocation. Okay, that's interesting. Dog food, but chicken feed. Uh huh. Uh, Craig, to travel from one country to another, what do you need to take with you? You need a passport. And if you're a dog, I、uh, don't think you need. Maybe you need a vaccination certificate. But do dogs need passports? I don't I think so. Don't know if they need passports, but they can get passports now. Can they, they exist? Can they really? Yeah, I wasn't making it up. Okay, I've seen them with my own eyes. Dogs have passports now. Dogs and cats can get a passport. Their owner obviously is in charge of it. They're responsible for it. But there is such a thing as a dog passport or a cat passport now, which makes it much, much, much easier to travel with your dog to a foreign country. I don't think it's obligatory to have one, but if you do have one, you save a lot of time. So I suppose in the passport are the details of the injections and vaccinations that the dogs have had. I suppose exactly. And if it has a chip. If the dog or cat has been chipped,、uh, then the number will be written in the passport, and they can scan the chip and、uh, make sure that it corresponds.、Uh, Craig, if you need to go to the vet,、uh, you're going to have to pay them some money if they look at your animal. What would you call the money you pay the vet? Probably the fees. F W E S, which is the same word that you use when you pay. School fees, for example, if you study at a language school, then every month, every term, or every year, you pay fees for education. So when you go to the vets, you'd pay the veterinary fees. You said fees. You didn't say fleas, did you? No, because fleas are pulgas. Spell that, please. P U L G A. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the English word. The English word F L E. A flea. I had fleas once. Really? Yeah.、What? When I first arrived in Valencia many years ago, I stayed in a very, very cheap、uh, hostel because I didn't have money for a hotel. I came here with very, very little money, so I stayed in a really <laughs> cheap hostel near the market, near the central market, in the centre of Valencia. And after three or four days, I, I started scratching. And I realised I got fleas from from the hotel, and it was horrible. I had to wash all the clothes, buy special powder. It took me a long time to get rid of the fleas from the clothes from the sheets. So immediately I moved out of the hotel, and、uh, had to get rid of the fleas. It was a horrible, horrible experience. If you were a were a dog or a cat, 
you might have been deloused. <laughs> I was deloused with the powder. <laughs> yeah, to delouse. That's desparasitar, to delouse. So louse is um, similar to flee. So to, to delouse, D-E-L-O-U-S-E. Or to prevent fleas in the first place, you can wear um, a, a flea collar next time, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> I hope there won't be a next time. But the yeah. flea collar is something you put around the neck of the animal and that prevents the fleas from attaching themselves to the animal. Craig, when you walk a dog in a public area with lots of people, you shouldn't let it walk around free. Uh, what do you need to do with the dog? Well, you should have your dog on a lead, L-E-A-D, or sometimes a leash, L-E-A-S-H. To lead, the verb is yavar, so the lead is the thing you attach to the collar of the dog in order to keep the dog close to you. Uh, Craig, uh, Mother Nature will take its course. Uh, we spoke in our last episode about the birds and the bees. There are certain instincts which all animals uh, find hard to resist. Dogs and cats are no exception. No, they're only uh, human after all. <laughs> yes. So to stop uh, unwanted little babies or puppies or kittens being born, what could you do with your dog or cat? Well, there's a verb in English which is to spay, S-P-A-Y, esterilizar, to spay your cat or spay your dog. Mm -hmm. Or to neuter, it's another way of saying Yes, it. another way of saying the same thing. Neuter, which is similar to the word neutral, like it has no sex, let's say, so it can't reproduce. Of course, this is only a problem when your cat or dog is in heat. The expression to be in heat Estar en celo. Uh -huh. So it's not the same as to be hot? No. To be in heat means you're sexually active. Uh -huh. Estar en celo. And how would you translate it into Spanish? To be hot. Tener calor. Exactly. Not the same at all. Uh, to go walkies, Craig, is something you <laughs> might say to a dog. Walkies, walkies. That means you want to caminar con el perro, or you want to walk the dog, or to take the dog for a walk. To take the dog out, I might say as well. Now, I know it's not normal for cats, but I, I tell you, honestly, I saw someone walking a cat a few days ago. It's I saw, true. I saw someone here. On walk, a lead. With I, a cat. I saw someone here walking a pig. Wow. Yeah. There's the miniature pigs you can, you can get now. And there was a guy a few weeks ago here in where I live walking a pig on a lead. Wow. Taking the pig for a walk. Bizarre. How strange. Um, sadly, some animals get abandoned and they might end up in an animal rescue center. That's un centro de rescate de animales where you could adopt uh, a dog or cat or some other animals as well. I think that's the best way to, to get an animal is to rescue it from a rescue center because you're giving the animal a home and there's a possibility that the animal might be put down. The phrasal verb to put down an animal is to sadly put them to sleep, to, to basically kill them, which happens when dogs or cats are strays and they have no what, home. What's a stray? Ah, stray means no home. Stray, yeah. If a stray animal has no place to live, has no owner, has no home, so regrettably they put down these animals. If you adopt an animal from a rescue centre, you're giving the animal a home. And there are some lovely animals in these rescue centres. Craig, imagine you you were uh, dealing with a uh, customs aduana, or perhaps with a vet, and you wanted to say in English, "Mi perro ha completado su estancia de cuarentena." How might you say that in English? Let's see. My dog has completed quarantine. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, my dog has completed quarantine. Not about mi perro tiene las vacunas y analíticas en regla. My dog has its vaccinations up to date, or my dog has its tests up to date. Up to date, al fecha. What about mi gato está tomando eh, su medicación? My cat's taking its medication. What about mi perro me ha mordido cuando he ido a tocarle la cola? <laughs> My my dog 
bit me. The past of to bite is bit. My dog bit me when I went to touch it. Or my dog bit me when I went to touch its tail. Its tail. Tail is collar. And a big problem after a dog or cat has had an operation. Mi gato se ha deshecho el vendaje. <laughs> my cat has ripped off its dressing. So vendaje is dressing or bandage. Dressing or bandage. And the phrasal verb to rip off is to violently remove. So my cat has ripped off its dressing. We'd like to take a moment now to tell you about our sponsor, italki. Italki is a website where you can find a professional native English teacher to improve your English one-to-one -one using Skype. You choose the time and you choose the teacher. Razor and I have both had lessons with italki teachers and we've been very happy with their service. I asked Daniel, who works at the italki offices in Shanghai, China, what comes to mind when he thinks of Spain. Here's Daniel. When I think of Spain, generally what comes to mind is Spanish football because I'm a big Arsenal fan. Uh, and that's very bad today because Arsenal are about to play Barcelona and we're about to be beaten very, very badly. I talkie. Losing at football, but winning at languages. You can win too with your very own personal one-to-one -one teacher. I talkie are offering a free lesson when you sign up at inglespodcast.com slash italki. And Razor and I would like to thank Italki for sponsoring Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. As Craig said earlier, we can't really go into great, great detail about veterinary terms because we're not specialists and it's a huge area. So you can check out the website link, which is on this page, if you want more detailed expressions about veterinary uh, care and animals. But what we can do and is of use to everyone is to talk about some idioms or sayings using pets, which often have a metaphorical meaning. Do you think we, sh do you think we should do this or, or shall we leave sleeping dogs lie? <laughs> uh, what does that mean, to let sleeping dogs lie? To let sleeping dogs lie means to leave something alone because it might cause trouble. So let's be safe. Let's not provoke, provocar. Let's not provoke any problems or cause emails. Let's let sleeping dogs lie. Yeah. Because if you if a dog is sleeping and you wake it up, it's going to be annoyed. <laughs> and it might, might look for revenge. So just leave it alone. Uh, or it might bark a lot, but it's bark... Maybe worse than its bite. Yeah, if someone, if you're speaking about a person and you're complaining about a person, you said, oh, don't worry. The, his bark is worse than his bite. It means they're behaving in a very aggressive, threatening way, but it's usually harmless. It's not really, it's not as bad as you think. So to bark is ladrar. So dogs might bark, but as long as they don't bite you, you're not in any trouble. So if your boss says to you, oh, you should get this done. This should be done by now. Where's the project? Why haven't you finished this? I'm going to sack you. I'm going to fire you. And your colleague says, don't worry. His bark is worse than his bite. He won't do anything. What about the expression, Craig? Every dog has its day. How would you explain that? Perhaps that... Every person will one day have good luck or success at some point in their lives. So everybody will be f successful or fortunate eventually. Every dog has its day. Every dog has its moment of success or fame or reward. Craig, if I said to you that something or a situation was a dog's dinner or a dog's breakfast... What would you understand by that? I understand that it's a complete mess, a complete disaster. Like, look at that work you've given me. It's like a dog's dinner or it's like a dog's breakfast. It's a mess, a muddle. 
Craig, have you ever been in the doghouse? Ooh, yes, many <laughs> times. Many times I've come home after staying in the pub too long or going out with my friends and my partner is not very happy because dinner's burned or uh, we're late for something. So when your partner's angry with you or someone's angry with you, you are in the doghouse. They're kind of being cold to you and not... Not, not speaking to you. Not treating you as nice as they normally do. There must be a similar expression in Spanish, but I can't think of it at no, the moment. Me neither. Okay, if you go to see a man about a dog, does it really mean that you're going to see a man and you're going to talk about a dog? Is that what it means? No, it's a way of saying that you don't want to tell the person where you're really going. Um for example, you're going to the toilet, which is not a very nice thing to say. So you say, I won't be long. I'm just going to see a man about a dog. It means I'm disappearing and I don't want to tell you where I'm going. So I'm going to see a man about a dog is a way of saying them. You're going somewhere, you're doing something, but I'm not going to tell you. Uh -huh. If you stay in the pub too long and you drink too much, the next day you have a hangover the sucker what do you what can you do to help your hangover that's connected with dogs uh, you could take the hair of the dog or have a hair of the dog or have the hair of the dog what does yeah. that mean well it's nothing to do with actual hairs it's um when you're hung over uh, resacado, and you drink more alcohol thinking that will it'll help you avoid feeling bad uh, with the with your hangover, so it's kind of like, even though alcohol's made you feel bad, you drink a little bit more alcohol, and then you forget you feel bad. So if you've drunk half a bottle of whiskey the night before, and you've got a horrible hangover, if you have a very small whiskey the following day, it kind of takes the edge off the hangover. Uh, so they say. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But you, just, you just stay drunk. Said, you, you, you just don't realise how hungover you are. You perhaps. postpone the hangover <laughs> to the afternoon. Uh, Craig, not that long ago I was out with a friend of mine. Um, this friend is gay. Uh -huh. She's gay. Uh, and uh, this man came up to her and said, oh, you've got lovely eyes, blah, blah, blah. Oh, do you fancy meeting later? He wanted more than purely friendship from her, but she's gay. And she said, you're barking up the wrong tree, love. What was she saying, really? <laughs> you're barking up the wrong tree. To this um, man who was saying nice things to her. You're you're asking the wrong person. You're You're putting your attentions on the wrong person. So if yeah. you bark up the wrong tree, you make the wrong choice. Yeah, he's getting nowhere. Estás equivocado. She's not interested in men. She's only interested in women. So he can bark, but she's not listening. It's the wrong, <laughs> it's the wrong tree. A waste of time. What's... What could you say to a waiter in a restaurant if you want to take some of the food home? For example, you order a big pizza or a big lasagna or a huge amount of paella. You don't eat it all. You want to take some home. What would you ask for? A doggy bag. A doggy bag. Because in theory, originally, people said, oh, can you give me a, a doggy bag? It's for my dog at home. I'm going to give him the scraps, los restos. But... You know, it might actually be for you, but in theory, it's for the dog. So you you ask for a doggy bag. Craig, what's a dog fight? Not a common word you hear these days. Are you a fan of all black and white films? Oh, a dog fight. Yeah, of course. I'd forgotten. A dog fight is where two planes are trying to shoot each other out of the sky. So yeah. a dog fight is a fight between two aeroplanes yeah. in the First or the Second World War. I loved scenes with dog fights when I was a kid in old films. Me too. Can I can I the Red um, Baron. imitate one? You can join me if you like. Etc. That's quite you good. You know those old films, the the Germans and the and the and the RAF or the American Air Force fighting each other to the death up in the air. The dog red fight. the red baron. What's a what's a cat fight? A cat fight is when two women fight. 
nothing to do with uh, airplanes. Yeah, perhaps it sounds a little bit sexist comparing women to cats fighting because they're they kind of scream and go a lot and that type of thing like cats do. Is the, is the theory? Use their fingernails. Mm-hmm. What's a mad dog? If it's not actually a dog that's mad, it could mean something else. Maybe a crazy person. Right. Mm-hmm. What's a shaggy dog story? <laughs> um, it's a story which is hard to believe. Like, imagine a student of mine hadn't done his homework. And I said, well, why didn't you do it? Well, you see, I did do it, uh, but then the, the dog, I the, left it on the bus. The dog, and... the dog at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't really believe it. Craig, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Do you agree with that? What does that mean? That means that when you get older, it's more difficult for you to learn. And when you're younger, you can easily learn things and learn new skills. But when you, like an old dog, for example, if you have a puppy, then you can teach the puppy to sit. You can teach the puppy to go to the toilet in the garden or when you take it for a walk. As the dog gets older, it's more difficult to teach the dog new things. And you can use that for people. Oh, that's oh, we've got a canine listener. Hello. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but the neighbor's dog's barking. He clearly likes this podcast. What's that? He said more of the same. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably telling us to shut up in doggy language. That's incredible. That This is really happening live. We haven't added that. The neighbor's dog is wanting to participate in this podcast. No expense spared with the <laughs> special, effects. With special effects on this podcast. The neighbor's dog's barking. Craig, what's puppy love? Isn't it when very young people f- fall in love or they think they're in love, like teenagers uh, say, oh, I'm in love and, and the love of my life, but really they don't understand what, what true love is, or maybe they do. Yeah, but it, it doesn't seem to. Craig, do you want to join me? If not, I understand. And they called it puppy, puppy love. love. <laughs> No, wasn't, that, wasn't that the, the Osmonds? It might have been. Might yeah, have been. The Osmonds. Uh, Craig, I'll leave it up to you with pleasure to explain the term dogging. Good luck. Thank you, mate. Uh, dogging is where people meet up or meet together in car parks in the UK and they watch each other having sex. It's very... Uh, and participate as well if they well, feel like it. Some, no, sometimes, yeah, sometimes they join in. Sometimes they par- participate... But the idea of dogging is mainly about watching and enjoying watching people have sex in cars in the UK. And if you go to YouTube or if you go to Snapchat, I'm sure you'll find many videos and pictures of people dogging. But can Craig and I just clarify that uh, we... We don't consider it as great behavior and we and we don't endorse it. We're merely explaining the term, but we're not suggesting that you do it. Uh, moving on very swiftly. Moving to the on. Next word. <laughs> very, very moving swiftly. Moving on. Dog-eared. Dog-eared. If you have a book that's dog-eared, you use it very often. You read it a lot because if you don't have a bookmark, which is something... Uh, special for marking your page where you finish reading, it's very common to take the corner of the page and turn it over to remind yourself or to see where you stopped reading. So if you do this very often in a book, the book becomes dog-eared because the corner of the page looks like a dog's ear. All floppy. Uh, Craig, have you ever been top dog at anything apart from uh, UK education podcast? <laughs> Not really, no. No, I've, I've, I don't think there's an expression that's bottom dog, but I'm usually bottom dog. If you're top dog, then you are the top success of something. For example, who's top dog in the tennis world at the moment it certainly isn't sharapova no she last week she admitted to drug taking didn't she she's not top dog anymore and certainly not neither is it the spanish tennis player what's his name um i can't remember his name yeah since we don't know maybe we should pick a different sport yeah (laughs) 
Who's who's top dog in Formula One these days? We don't know that either. Know that. <laughs> who's top dog? Uh, who's top dog in in uh, Premiership football these oh, days? Oh, I know that one. That's Leicester. It's be- Leicester because they're beating Arsenal. Who yeah. would have thought that Leicester Leicester would be top dog? Wow. Last season they were at the bottom of the division and the league, and now they're top dog. Craig, the expression "dog eat dog" it doesn't refer to canine cannibalism. What does it really mean? Well, dog eat dog suggests that uh, there's a very competitive, very tough atmosphere, and uh, if if you don't um, act very harshly against someone else, they'll do it against you. Like, if you're a dog and you don't eat another dog, it's going to eat you anyway. So you might as well eat it first. So very, very harsh competition. The world of finance and investment can be a very dog-eat-dog place to work. I've just re-watched, which means I watched for a second time, The Wolf of Wall Street, speaking of animals, Lobo the the Wall Street, with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. And it's a very dog-eat-dog competitive business. The um, the area of finance and investment on Wall Street. You have to be very dogged. Dogged, the adjective, D-O-G-G-E-D. If you're very dogged, you're very determined, very motivated, very driven person. Yeah. Craig, I've known some bitches in my time, but there's no bitch like Berta. She's great. What does bitch mean? A bitch is a female dog. Mm. However... It has other meanings in English. Um, if you use bitch as a verb, it means you're whining or complaining excessively. So if you're complaining non-stop continuously about something, you could say, stop bitching about it. Stop complaining. Stop whining about it. Yes. And then, of course, I'm sure most of the listeners already know the colloquial a very common expression of bitch as an insulting term for a woman. Yeah. You could uh, say, for example, she's a right bitch, that woman. It's a, it's a swear word, so be very, very careful when you use it. It's insulting. When I was referring to Berta, Berta, of course, is a greyhound. The Galga, that's my favourite bitch of all time. And if you saw the American series Breaking Bad, um, the word bitch was used very, very often by the characters as a person who performs a task for, for another person. And it's usually quite degrading in status. If you said, get me a, get me a drink, bitch, it's a street term for um, someone who's serving you. There's a fixed expression, life's a bitch. Life's hard. Yeah, life's a bitch. Uh, son of a bitch. Uh, when we're talking about humans, we're not talking about dogs now. A son of a bitch is uh, also like the word bitch used as an insult. You're a son of a bitch or he's a, he's a son of a bitch. He's a terrible person. And the plural, sons of bitches. It can be quite a strong were uh, expression, so be careful with it. Although sometimes it it is used as a kind of joke. Like if a friend does something, they play a trick on you, you can say, oh, you son of a bitch. But if you have an argument with someone you don't know and you call them son of a bitch, that would be quite insulting. It depends on the situation. And it depends on the relationship you have with the person you're speaking to. As with most swear words or tacos, if you're using a swear word with someone who you have a close personal relationship, con mucha confianza, then it's in a joking way. But be very careful with these expressions with people you don't know. Be careful with the pronunciation of female dog or these other meanings, bitch, B-I-T-C-H. Don't confuse it with playa, beach, B-E-A-C-H. What's the difference in the vowel sound? Bitch, uh, fe- uh, female dog, is a short sound, bitch. And beach, playa, is the long E sound. Make it very long. Beach. Well, maybe not that long, but (laughs) beach. If you call someone a cat, or if you use the adjective catty, uh, how are you 
uh, portraying them? What type of person are they? If someone's a cat or they're catty. Not very nice. It's negative, isn't it? Someone who's maybe criticizing you. Right. Yeah. Someone who's easily upset, hard to please, because uh, in my opinion, and half of you are going to hate me for it, that's what cats are. I'm a dog lover. I haven't got a lot of time for cats, I'll admit. They're so bloody difficult to please, and they're they're never happy. They're the catty. <sighs> Give me a dog any day. I'm sorry, cat lovers. I'm a dog lover. I'm proud of it. Another word for a cat is pussy. Which is also uh, yes, female genitalia. Yes. Um, and also a cowardly man. Un cobarde can be a pussy. And you pussy. Why don't you eat it? Why don't you why don't you do it? Why don't you have some guts, have some courage? Don't be a pussy. Yeah. But of course it, it's also a colloquial term for a cat. Yes. Craig, have you ever had a pussy? <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh, listeners, but I, I can't resist. Have, have you, uh, Craig, have you ever had a pussy? <laughs> <laughs> Only when I went dogging. <laughs> to, <laughs> what, what's wrong, Craig? Cat cut your tongue? <laughs> what does that mean? Cat, cat, got cat your cut tongue. your tongue is why aren't you answering? Why aren't you talking? That's interesting. Cat cut your tongue or cat got your tongue? That's interesting because you said cat cut your tongue i've never heard that before i would say has cat got your tongue it's both. correct you can say both okay. yeah you can say both what yeah would, I, i've heard both cat got or cat cut i've never heard cat cut, cut your tongue yeah what's uh what's if you pussy foot around what does that mean you're pussy footing around the subject it's like you're not really doing it properly you're not making an effort you're being too sensitive because if you watch cats, pussies walking, they often walk very delicately. They, they're they overcautious. Very dainty, yeah. Um, we've asked this question before, but I'll ask it again. I'll remember your answer. If you were reborn as an animal, if you came back in the next life as an animal, which one would you choose? Uh, Berta's long-time lover, Greyhound. <laughs> That's not what you said before. I know, it's not. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. I know she wouldn't have me anyway. She's so unfaithful. She she has she has admirers all over the place. So she's fickle, F-I-C-K-L-E. She changes partners or changes her mind constantly. She's a yes. fickle friend. Yes, indeed she is. But actually, no, that's not true. I'd quite like to be an elephant. Yeah, me too. An elephant because they look very wise and they live a long time and nobody messes with elephants when they're big. They leave them alone. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, elephants have uh, a very strange anatomy. Uh, what, did the, what did the elephant say to the, the nude man, the man wearing no clothes? No idea. The elephant said to the naked man, how can you breathe with that? With that nose. Read oh. it as you will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get it. Because elephants have very large trunks, the big, long, kind of nose-like object, which elephants used to be breathe with. And men, not women, men, unfortunately, don't have these long trunks. <laughs> yes. Yes. M- moving on. Moving uh, on. Swiftly. Moving on. Do you do you know any vets? Uh, I don't mean Vietnam War veterans. I mean <laughs> veterinary surgeons. Do you think a veterinary surgeon or a vet is a is a good career choice? Do you know any people who who are vets? I don't know any personally, but I, but I've met a few. And needless to say, you really need to be an animal lover. It would be a bit silly to become a vet if you weren't an animal lover. Having said that. I do know somebody, I'm not going to name him because I don't want to embarrass him, but I know someone who is a trained qualified vet and he spends his entire working life uh, certifying animals so that they can be killed to be eaten. Really? It's terrible. But only a vet can do that Mm -hmm. and he can't get work any other way. So he has to work in an abattoir, matadero, Mm -hmm. Uh, inspecting the animals to make sure they're fit and healthy 
for them only to be killed later. It's a terrible job to have to do. Seems a bit hypocritical to study that career and then, or study those, study that, to study to be a vet and then have yes. to decide. When that but was only a vet can tell that the animal is healthy. That's yeah. the strange thing. I know terrible. A friend of mine's son is going to study veterinary medicine in, in the UK and then come back to Spain to work um, with horses. And in some places they can earn very, very good money. Uh, to go and check a horse, you could ask two or three hundred uh, euros an hour once you've studied. So it's it's a very good job to be in if you love animals. Craig, have you ever given money or given your time to an animal charity? When I was living in the UK, I gave money to the PDSA, which is an abbreviation for the People's Dispensary for Sick Animals. And they do. They used to do very good work in rescuing and caring for animals. I'm not sure if they still exist now, but um, have you? Well, yes, I've given a little bit of my time to Galgo 112, <laughs> who I like to I like to publicize every once in a while because they're great people. I translated the manual that they give people who adopt greyhounds into English because there were so many English people adopting uh, the greyhounds. So yeah, I have. And it was it was nice to know I might be helping a little bit. And also Berta, who is an adopted greyhound, as you all know, has transformed my life. Yes, you're, you're in love with, it, with Berta. Yes, even though she doesn't return the love. What can you do? Thank you to Eva for uh, sending us the question that... Um, helped put this episode together thank you all for listening to this episode and for our 100th episode which is very very soon we would like you to send us a voice message and tell us how english has helped you and tell us your story because of my english maybe you had a better job maybe you had a promotion went traveling met people anything that improved your life because of english you can send us your voice messages, which you can leave at speakpipe.com slash podcast. Or you could send us an email to me, Craig, at inglespodcast.com. Or to me, Reza, at belfastreza at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening. And on next week's episode, we'll be speaking about 20 phrasal verbs that you must know. So until then, it's goodbye from Reza. And it's goodbye from Craig. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. 